Hi guys, welcome back to Just Talking, where I talk out your news sometimes, listen. So today we're doing a 4 in 1 history video about the wooden roller coasters which are at Blackpool Pleasure Beach located along the northwest coast of England. And of course if you do enjoy this bumper video on the history playlist then make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And let's get into the Big Dipper. So it was built in 1923 by John A. Miller and designed by William Strickler and Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters. So F Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters specifically designed the train cars for the ride as they did with a lot of the different rides which I will be discussing in this video. So it would cost £25,000 in currency that is relevant to 1922, so that might equal more than a million pounds or a couple million pounds, and it would be an out and back wooden roller coaster. So an out and back wooden roller coaster is where the train will set off, and briefly after coming out of the station it will ascend a lift hill, and then it will go down through a series of twists, turns and jumps, and then it will come back in the same direction it came down. In 1936, the ride would be extended by Charles Page, whose only work out of 13 co wooden roller coasters remains in the Big Dipper, Nickelodeon Streak, Blue Flyer and Grand National, which is all of the roller coasters I'll be discussing today. And that would bring the arches over the southern entrance by Burger King. So you can see that right here. And also there was some other little jumps and hills that were added in with this extension as well. Joseph Emberton worked on the station for this ride. He is famed for working on Grand National and the Ghost Train in the Casino Building, and he's known for his favoured Art Deco style, which was very popular in the 1920s and 30s when his work was mainly placed in the park. So on February 13th, 2010, the ride reopened following an incident to do with the brake run and the train collision, which I discussed in my full Big Dip history video. And it reopened with a new arrow train design instead of the white with the red splatter train design and a, f a new fountain in the station and also a track in the station and on certain parts of the ride where the accident took place. So for Nickelodeon Streak, which is located in Nickelodeon land, Nickelodeon Streak is a wooden out and back coaster, the same as Big Dipper, which was built by Charles Page as well in 1933. So it makes use of the lift hill and certain elements from its predecessor, Velvet Coaster, which closed in 1932, and I'm not too sure when that um, actually opened, but there is actually um, a Weatherspoons, I believe, on the promenade, which is actually named after this iconic roller coaster, and the car, which was previously a Velvet Red, of course, um, used to appear in the station and, and was preserved there for quite a while, but of course I'm not too sure where that actually exists now, whether it's in a museum or it's at Blackpool Council, where a lot of, you know, preserved artefacts from this park actually are housed. And if you are invited or you do ask the council, you can actually go visit some of these old pieces of rides and different memorabilia and posters and pictures from the park. So from 1933 to 2010, when, of course, Nickelodeon Land was built, it was called Roller Coaster and primarily just had the classic white and brown wooden coaster look, same as Grand National and Big Dipper. So it didn't really have a paint job apart from the white paint on, you know, the supports and the wood. On July 27th, 2010, the park did announce Nickelodeon Land, which would have nine new flat rides and five would be reused, such as the Rugrats Lost River Ride, that was originally the Beaver Creek Log Flume, the Backyardigans Pirate Adventure, that was previously a pirate spinning ride, which just had a light-up pirate ship on it. Of course, you had Zipper Dipper, which was there, um, and of course you had, um, which is now Blue Flyer, and of course Nickelodeon Streak. So it stands at 61 feet, making it the second tallest wooden roller coaster at the park. And until 2006, when the trains were replaced with the ones from Big Dipper, it had no restraints, basically, whatsoever. So I would never ride it without restraints, of course. And I, I never rode it before 2006, but, of course, it must have been pretty scary and intense riding a wooden roller coaster, which can be quite turbulent and offers quite a lot of airtime without a proper restraint on it. So for Blue Flyer, which was previously named Zipper Dipper, this is a history for that. So Blue Flyer, of course, as I mentioned, was formerly called Zipper Dipper when it operated at Beaver Creek, which closed in 2010. And any prior name to the coaster when it was originally built is unknown. So it was built in 1934 by Charles Page, with the trains built once again by Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters Incorporated. It was renamed and rethemed during the twenty ten for during twenty ten for the opening of Nickelodeon Land in the twenty eleven season. It became a Grade Two listed building in the same year as the rest of the coasters and Wild Mouse, 
on, I believe, April 19th, 2017. For a short period of time, the coaster was also named the Warburton's Milk Roller Coaster. I'm not too sure specifically why it was named the Milk Roller Coaster, but my assumption is they did actually do, um, and I believe they still do, a milk bread range. So I believe it was actually that sort of sponsorship. But of course, he can see the Zipper Dipper Station, and of course, Beaver Creek was a fantasy-themed and storybook land-themed area for families. And of course, everything was really vibrant, and you can see... Um, Bradley and Bella Beaver up at the top here and now it's just a sort of modern contemporary style station as well as Nickelodeon streak that has a sort of you know big like orange station building and it's not actually like a proper building it's just sort of a facade that stood up and you know when you look behind the station it's not actually a full building it's just a sort of prop up stand um but for the Grand National Coaster this um, is, of course, another wooden roller coaster, as you might expect, um, and it opened in 1935 and was designed and built by Charles Page and Henry J. G. Traver. So Henry G. Traver's cyclone coaster at Long Island, California, is said to have inspired the ride's creation. Joseph Emberton designed the original concrete and glass station for the wooden Mobius loop coaster. Of course, now it has a new contemporary Art Deco style station, which I, for some reason, call it the Butterfly Station due to, you know, the looping style of the coaster. But, of course, a Mobius loop coaster um, is where it appears that the train switches tracks and goes into two different stations, um, but it actually only follows one track and just stops at two stations instead of two going round and then switching over. So it's a really great effect and it's only one of maybe three or four left in the whole entire world and it's a really incredible experience. It gives the effect that they're racing because of course they release the two trains from the stations at the same time and you obviously race through a series of Grand National themed areas um, I'm not too sure of all of the um, areas that you stop at because I'm not a big horse racing fan but of course it has some iconic locations from the Grand National and a lot more. So £1 million was invested into rebuilding the Grand National Station in 1990 after some private sector investments had been made to the park in order to keep it maintained and, and you know the like. It became a Grade 2 listed building in 2017. Of course, here I need to point this out. This is a picture from 1935, and this displays a park from an aerial view. And of course, he can see all of Grand National down here. There's Big Dipper right there. And I'm not too. And there, actually, is where Nickelodeon Streak was when it was Roller Coaster. And I'm actually um, not too sure where Blue Flyer is on this. I believe it's somewhere down here. But of course, as you can see here, there's literally nothing here where. You know, now you you would have, you know, your sort of infusion area and um, big one and icon. That's all in this space here. And, of course, there's been a lot of changes since that point. It's not even been a century since this picture was taken. And there's already been dozens more rides added in. And you can still see Sahara Maxim's flying machines over there, which is an incredible ride too. In 2004, a fire did actually break out in the station due to an electrical fault because the station was still primarily built out of wood so it easily caught on fire and parts of the station, the track and also parts of Alice in Wonderland did actually have to be rebuilt due to the fire. And yeah, that's really it for this video and I'm really um, grateful for all the support I've gotten on some of my previous videos and I've really enjoyed making this one as well. I really do love making history videos of this park and other parks. If you have any suggestions for any rides that you'd like to see done on the history videos, um, I'll make sure to check them out and make sure that I can get a nice long history video for you guys. Um, and if you want to see some more videos on the history of rides, then make sure to check out my playlist, which I'll put on the end screen. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And yeah, this was just talking. Bye-bye.